Continuing our discussion of stats, now we're going to talk about the normal distribution, often also referred to as the bell-shaped curve. Now, normal distributions arise in nature with many things that you measure, many things that you test, you'll get a normal distribution as a pattern of your data. And one of the interesting facts and important facts about the normal distribution is you only need to know the mean, or the average, and the standard deviation to completely characterize how that normal distribution will act. In this picture here, I have four different normal distributions. And you can see they all have that bell-shaped curve. They're symmetric, they're centered around their mean or average, and they're the same on either side of that. These three all have a mean of zero. This one has a mean of negative two. I don't know why the software put out negative one there, but the mean is actually negative two. They also have different standard deviations. This one has a standard deviation of 0.5. So the data are not as spread from the mean as this one that is also centered at zero but has a standard deviation of 1. So you see the data is spread a little further out. Change in the standard deviation would change the spread. Change in the mean will change the center, where the thing is actually centered. And all you need is those two numbers to completely characterize it. Now there are two important things we're going to learn about the normal distribution. The first falls under heading of, of I'm going to call rules of thumb. And I'm going to use sigma as my standard deviation, because that's common in statistics. So let little sigma be the standard deviation, the Greek letter sigma. The rules of thumb are the following. Two-thirds of a population are within one sigma of the mean, or, or rather one sigma of the average. So here's a representative normal distribution. This is its average. In statistics, often called u. On our calculator, it's going to be x bar. And this is one sigma, and this is minus one sigma. So within one sigma, either way, this dark area here represents two-thirds of the population. So if we have two-thirds in here, we're also clearly missing one-third. And it's equally split on the low side and on the high side. So half of a third would be one-sixth, uh, roughly. And these are rules of thumb. They're approximations. So and it's not really exactly two-thirds either, but just good enough for, for keeping in mind two-thirds are within one sigma of the standard deviation. And all we need for a normal distribution is to know the mean and the sigma, and we'll make applications of these to specific numbers. Within two standard deviations of the mean, so that would be out to this line here, so we've added in this area and this area, we find 95 percent of the population. So the important thing we're seeing here is that really most of the data are pretty close to the center. When you start going further from the center, you find a lot less individuals. You think of this as height. Most people are within a few inches of the average height, and then a few people are you know, a little further out, but you, it's really, really rare to see someone that's super tall or super short, and height would follow a normal type of pattern. So the rule of thumb to remember, two-thirds are within one sigma, 95% are within two sigma, 99.7, or darn near all of them, are within three sigma. So by three sigma to negative three sigma, there's very few members of the population outside, so we're nearly done. So we're going to memorize these rules of thumb because they give us sort of an idea of what's going on with any population when we know the mean and the standard deviation and we know it's normally distributed. Now not all problems in the world are going to fall precisely along those standard deviation lines. So we'll find a way to calculate it on our calculator. It's under second distribution, which is right above variables. And we're going to choose the normal CDF out of that list. It looks like this. Normal CDF is the second one down. And to use that calculation, we're going to put a min, a max. So this is the range of values that we're looking for, the range we want. And then the mean and standard deviation, those are given in the problem. We have to know those in order to know how our normal standard deviation is, is behaving. So let's see how this would all apply. OK, so here's a problem to work on. Weight of catfish growing in a fish farm is normally distributed. The mean is 18 pounds, the standard deviation is 3 pounds. What do the three rules of thumb tell us about our catfish? What is the probability a fish is less than 13 pounds? So we grab one fish, maybe we go fishing in our own fish pond, and we catch one. What's the probability it's less than 13 pounds? And if the tank has 10,000 fish, how many do you expect of those 10,000 to be over 25 pounds? So we're going to apply what we learned on the previous uh, two pages to this problem. So remembering our rules of thumb, we know that two-thirds are within one standard deviation. So two-thirds of the fish should be within three pounds of our, of our mean 18. Well, within three means to three lower and three higher, so 15 to 21, subtracting three and adding three. 
I've actually written out the answers. So two thirds of the fish are within one standard deviation. So I subtract three and add three, that gets me one standard deviation either way. So we expect most of our fish to be between that range. And in fact, 95% from our second rule of thumb will be within two standard deviations or six pounds of our mean. So six pounds down would get us to 12 pounds and six pounds heavier would get us to 24. And darn near all or 99.7 of our fish, if we go one standard deviation further, gives us a range of nine to 27. So really we expect very few fish to be outside of these ranges. In fact, since two thirds are between 15 and 21, the missing part here is one third and half of that or one sixth of the fish would be greater than 21, one sixth would be less than 15. Here we're missing 5%, half of that is 2.5%, and we expect half on either side. So 2.5% of the fish would be greater than 24 pounds in weight, and 25 would be less than 12, and so on. Very, very small amount would be outside of it here, obviously. Now that this one here, uh, what is the probability of fish is less than 13 pounds? We're going to need to do a calculation. 13 didn't line up with any of these. So we'll use normal CDF on the calculator. If we want the fish to be less than 13, well clearly it can't weigh less than zero, so that's my minimum. 13 is my maximum. And then we put in the numbers that were given, 18 and 3, the mean and the standard deviation. So referring back to the other slide, you recall, our range that we're accepting goes here, minimum to max, mean standard deviation. So with that plugged in, we hit enter, and we get 0 0.04779, or approximately 4.8% of the fish would, would fit that under 13 pound criteria. Now the next question said, of the 10,000 fish, how many would you expect to be over 25? Well, I can pull up the previous calculation on my calculator by doing second entry. Save me the time of going and looking for it. Now if I want them to be, I want the fish to be over 25 pounds, 25 is my minimum. It's the smallest fish I'll accept, comma, and then no maximum. So what I need to do is put in a large number, a ridiculously large number will be fine. Put in 200. Well, you, as we've already seen, normal drops off so fast. Three or four standard deviations were done, so 20, 30, doesn't matter. Anything beyond a reasonable amount, and there's just simply not gonna be any more fish to consider. So 25 to 200, there's just no way we have a fish over 200 pounds, given that the mean is 18 and the standard deviation is three. So I enter that, and that gives me the probability. I multiply that times 10,000, and I find that 98.15, or really about 98 of the fish in the tank, are going to meet the criteria of weighing more than 25 pounds. And that's really all we need to know about the normal distribution for this course. The basic shape, the three rules of thumb, and how to do simple calculations on our calculator.